Today we're going to be talking about skin. And skin is very important. Remember what skin does? We've looked at that in a few other presentations. It breathes, which means it cannot be blocked because it's breathing. And apparently when they painted the model for, for the James Bond movie, Goldfinger, they had to paint the front part of her gold and film it, wash that off and paint the back part gold and then film her because you can't cover the whole skin or the person will die. It breathes, the skin breathes. So be very mindful to allow your skin to breathe. The skin also throws off waste. Another reason why the skin should be allowed to have as much air and, and probably play, I suppose, as much as possible. So be careful what you're putting on the skin because it can inhibit its ability to breathe and it can also inhibit its ability to throw off waste. And the skin also absorbs. Another reason why we should be careful what we touch. I was consulting with a lady, she was only in her early 40s, who'd had a stroke. So I was immediately intrigued, why did she have a stroke? She's a chemist or a pharmacist and she was from one of the Caribbean islands and she said she mixes all the tablets up together with bare hands. So the chemicals from the from the tablets are all going into her hands. The same thing happened, I met a vet once, a vet nurse, <laughs> and she did the same thing and she had major liver problems. You see, the skin absorbs, so one must be very careful as to what one touches and also what one puts on their skin. But what I want to target in this presentation is two sadly very common diseases today called psoriasis and eczema. Eczema is usually the name given for a baby or a child and psoriasis is usually the name given to the skin disease in, in the latter years. When I say latter years, I don't mean the elderly years, I'm probably meaning latter past teenage years. So getting into the 20s, 30s, 40s, it's often called psoriasis. And I've seen many people suffer extremely with this. And again, we need to know why. Because remember Newton's third law of motion that to every action there is an equal and an opposite reaction. So as I go through this presentation, looking at some of the causes, I'm going to be using a couple of stories of people that have come across my path and the factors that came together to cause their psoriasis. And I'm also going to be, as I weave through these story, show you how they totally conquered it. Did you hear that? Every case of psoriasis, eczema that I have come across, they have been able to conquer it. But I think what we'll do is we'll begin with the babies. So if a baby has psoriasis, I begin to investigate. I talked to the mother and I say to the mother, is the baby bottle fed? And if the baby is bottle fed, I inquire as to the type of milk the baby's on. And if the mother says, it's on a cow's milk formula, then my suggestion is to change over to a goat's milk formula. I don't know about other countries, but I know in Australia you can buy some very nice goat milk formulas. In fact, I think three of my grandchildren were raised on the goat milk formulas, so you can get some very good ones. So go over to the goat milk formula because an allergy to dairy is one of the big factors in the skin diseases. And if the mother is breastfeeding, then I inquire to the mother if the mother's having dairy. Another factor can be wheat, the hybridized wheat. We looked at that in an earlier lecture, how the wheat was hybridized in the 1950s. So it created a, a structure in the protein or the gluten part of the of the wheat that is very, very difficult to fully break down for the body. And if it's not fully broken down by the body, it gets into the blood, then antibodies are created and you get this whole, this whole reaction in the body. And it's one of the contributing factors to eczema. So I'll give you the story of one lady. And she said, yes, I, I am having wheat. Yes, I am having dairy. Refined sugar? She said, no, I don't have refined sugar. Peanuts? Peanuts can be another factor. 
So I suggested she have the almond milk instead of the uh, peanut butter. So almond butter instead of peanut butter and almond or organic soy milk instead of dairy milk. And for the wheat, I said initially it would be good to go off all bread. Now once the baby's eczema is conquered, you could start with the ancient grain breads, but initially to stop all breads. So she can eat rice, she can eat millet and buckwheat. There are many grains she could eat. After one month, the mother sent me a picture and the baby still had patches of eczema on it. The baby was about eight months of age. And I said, please keep going. Please don't give up because a slice of bread can be out of your body within 24 hours, but the effect can remain for even up to two months. At two months, I get an email with photographs of a baby with no eczema. <laughs> She said, thank you so much. I, I, I didn't realise, and of course most people don't realise it. And there are ladies that are breastfeeding their babies and they're eating dairy and they're eating wheat and their baby doesn't have eczema. I find that when a situation arises in the body, there can be many factors, many factors. That's why these eight laws are used as the investigators. Are they having fresh air? And another lady told me that her baby developed eczema when they went into a new house. And when we investigated in the house, the little cot where her baby slept, there was black mold. Now it wasn't there when she first put the cot there, but they found out there was a leaking tap behind the wall and because the cot was nestled into the corner and had the bedding in there, that they never saw it. Another lady told me that her baby developed eczema after they'd moved into a new house and the baby was always sick. So I, I suggested that they go to the real estate and find out if the house was sprayed. Sometimes houses are sprayed with strong chemicals just before the person moves in and she found that that was the case. And the baby felt it more than anyone because the baby was crawling down, down on the floor and the baby had no eczema until they'd gone into that house. So that's fairly, a fairly obvious connection. So it could be chemicals, it could be mold. These can be contributing factors. Definitely, there's usually an inherited factor, but remember genetics loads the gun, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. So you could have a whole family move into, into a house that has just been sprayed with, with uh, chemicals not long before, and the crawling baby will feel it more because they're crawling on the, on the floor. And the parents didn't realize the danger because they thought, wow, this is a great floor. It's a wooden floor, which means it, it will be healthy, but then one also has to investigate were there chemicals in the, in the lacquer that was used to, to uh, paint the floor. So th there are many factors that come in. That's why we should all be private investigators investigating why these things are so. So let's move on to the adults. But before I go on to the adults, I'll just have one more story. And it was a guest that came to our health retreat about three years ago. She said, my grandson had eczema and my daughter took him to a, a pediatrician. And this pediatrician was known to be more on the natural side. He wasn't ready to do drugs like others may be. And, and the paediatrician said to her daughter, remember the daughter of the guest that was with us, stop the wheat, dairy, refined sugar, peanuts and oats. <laughs> Isn't it nice to hear that there are paediatricians who are recognising the role that the, the food has to play. She said, my son totally recovered from his eczema. And that she said, that's as you have just explained, it took about two months. If the baby doesn't recover in two months, then you would investigate a mold factor or a, um, a chemical factor could, could come into play there. What can you do meanwhile? Is there anything you can put on the skin? Well, unfortunately there isn't because it's from the inside. Now a little coconut oil might bring a little relief. Sometimes aloe vera can bring a little relief. If the baby's itching, ice. 
ice is the best. If you scratch an itch, it feels good, but then after you've scratched it, oh dear, it's even itchier and even now it's hurting and maybe the, the skin is broken. But if you ice...